necessarily changing the pick for Aki, but limiting the impact Beishan can have. But I think it really starts there from the jungle matchup because the entire game really kind of went a bit topsy-turvy from there. We'll see because same side selection here, WE, OMG, game number two, uh, blue and red respectively. And already the bands are the same, making sure Cream doesn't get that Akali where he is. Five out of six games is a win. 10 KDA, that, that's an absolute no-no. So I respect that here from WE, while OMG really targeting towards missing and his Thresh, which has been a great pick in 2019, 2020 alike. A final ban though, not gonna be the Ezreal, the Zin Zhao taken away. Let's see if WE rinse and repeat with that ADC pick. Yeah, so I like the decision to shut that down. It does leave the Callista though open, which they banned last time. It appears WE may not even be too bothered about that one and we'll just once more lock the Ezreal. But now, if you are gonna go in a similar direction, if you are gonna take that Diana for OMG, I think you are most likely gonna be in a more comfortable matchup and not threatened as much early. So maybe that is where you can lean into that sort of mid-game team fighting combo off the set and the Diana. Oh, we'll get past the, the Ramus at the very least. Let's just see. Uh, AD Carry looked at the exact same here. One of Abel's favorite, most played. You talked about early impact and the Diana, as we talked about before, doesn't have that same agency, but the Udir does. Uh, something that has lowered in priority a little bit. They don't care. They're just going to go back to the Diana. So I guess we roll in over and over as Aki kind of sighs and rolls his eyes. Yeah, so we saw some slight tweaks uh, so far with the Xin Zhao ban and that feel like omg feel like okay we're comfortable now we've changed that we've adjusted that but now we in a position where they have the option to potentially tweak things themselves and they're going to opt in for that viego so denying it from cream and of course this can go into the jungle yeah. positions are banned that's probably where we might well end up seeing it and then they are going to follow through with the silas so the only thing really changing right now is that jungle pick for uh for we and it's just kind of crazy, right? Because we don't often see it too many times in the jungle. Now, of course, 11 picks with a good win rate, but uh, usually we see it mid, a couple of times in top there as well. But I like that. You know, it is that flexible pick coming through as Shanks gets his favorite. And on the other side for OMG, yep, there you go again. So I guess we're looking at a similar composition for OMG. They're saying it wasn't, you know, the composition itself. It was how we played it. And they think they can do it better in game number two. Yeah, the question is though, when, what are they going to look to do with their mid lane pick? Obviously, this, the Viego, something that can really help once you get that initial engage to clean up the fights after that uh, and, and deliver. But I actually think, you know, we saw Cream bring out the casting before. This could potentially be a casting angle. It's actually yeah. pretty good into the Silas in the 1v1 matchup. And again, once you start the fight strong, casting has that potential cleanup potential. The Kiana is going to get banned. Uh, they did ban Rel as the second one. We'll see if WE want to continue in that direction. Obviously, the Magnet Storm on top of all that AUE CC is uh, pretty impactful. But for OMG, oh, they yeah. have taken away Breeze Gwen. So something needs to be a little bit different there as well. Yeah, small adaptations coming through from OMG's ban phase. The Volley better follow suit as well, thinking that it could be a jungle pick, could be a top pick for Breathe too. Uh, something that has done relatively well in our region as well. I respect the Kiana ban. I said it game one, I'll say it again. Uh, Cream just had a s great performance. As WE changed, they banned the Rakan. That means the rail you talked about is open. Yeah, they have, have the opportunity to take that, but it is kind of difficult because you, you could take your mid laner here. You obviously know it's against the Silas, but if you were going to go for something a little bit more uh, fringe, like the casting, you may want to leave it till fifth pick. Uh, but I feel like, obviously, if you want to go the rel, you want to leave it till that last pick, make sure that you're taking it into a good matchup. Oh. And they it looks like it? they're gonna do it. OMG gonna go with the Yasuo. So we're talking about those Wombo combos. That is really delivering on the back of that one. OMG, even more ability to just blow up targets, but the team comp is gonna function in a similar way. So we've only seen this out of two people because it's always paired with the Diana. Dagda caught it the Hasaki fall, which has its own charm to it. Uh, Icon did it with Tarzan over on LNG. Rookie did it on Invictus Gaming uh, alongside Shun, but didn't have the same impact. We're going to see if it can be as good as Icon's 19 KDA, by the way, which is kind of insane. Bit of strong AD through the mid lane while on the side of WE playing defensive, got the Brom pick. Uh, you have a, a, a different composition here from WE. And now looking to lock in that top lane and cement the comp. I actually really love this though. A lot of the picks you want to pair with the, the Kaiser are going to be those aggressive engagers. Rakan is actually one of the better matchups into Braum with him banned. The Braum's in a really solid place here. And the Mundo coming out for Breathe. Again, 
I like this one. It's hard to punish the top lane, hard to dive. And in those extended fights, Mundo will just run down your team. If you're unable to kill him initially, he gets so much value from that healing. I think OMG probably just going to lean into the Gwen, but I feel like WE've navigated this one pretty solidly. Yeah, they have. Uh, and at least I'll say on OMG's side is they lock in the rel that we were talking about. So adding an extra form of engage that what we've seen against the Mundos is if there's not solid DPS, not constant DPS, like we saw uh, against LGD with the Ziggs pickup. And if it wasn't LGD, I apologize, but at the very least, uh, no, it was SMLZ. Excuse me, a little bit wrong there that the Mundo can be fine. He's this fridge that is unstoppable, takes zero damage. But at least this time, you have a Yasuo, you have a Kai'Sa, shorter range, sure, but you still have ways of getting through the armor, getting through the HP of Mundo and shredding him down if it becomes a numbers fight. Yeah, that's the thing. If they have a bit more longevity, I feel, uh, if they do manage to kill an initial target. Obviously, we saw that kind of with the Viego, but these two are obviously a huge amount of DPS in those later fights. So if they do get an initial kill, they can focus down the Mundo. But again, if they miss the execution on those engages, we will see WE come in with that value. Um, and I think a thing to really mention is obviously uh, the bot lane matchup, because we saw a lot of skirmishing there, a, a yeah. ton of it. And I feel like with the Rel, you have windows to obviously punish, but against the Braum, I love this pick in the current meta because we see so many of these melee supports, your Leonas, Nautiluses, Rels, all sorts. And the Braum is so good at shutting them down. If you engage, there's a really good chance that you're just going to get stun locked. You're going to see the Braum throw down the shield and block any carries damage. It's just such a good pick here. Even against the Yasuo, right? To set up, if he has to set up his own ultimates, which let's be honest, most of the time it'll come off the Moonfall, it'll come off the Rel, even the set. Uh, there are abilities that can be blocked quite nicely by this Brom. So I love that you bring it up here. Not something that we constantly see, but a nice response into OMG's comp as they change things up going into game two. We have a Yasuo on the rift here. We line up with the Diana to see if that all in potential is there again. And Orcs, while there are similarities on the side of OMG, we get a Mundo onto WE. We get a true fridge instead of this Gwen. The Viego in jungle as well. And I see a lot of good scaling once again i see a lot of snowball potential that we are trying to add on with this diego this silas once more yeah there will be a little bit less early agency though in this jungler and that's the big thing we wanted to highlight from that game one mvp performance from beishung on the Zinzao. but the diego not able to contest things as early and tends to wait more towards that level six point similar to the, the diana so Aki should be more comfortable in this jungle matchup, maybe able to make an impact a bit sooner, not be so scared of Beishong uh, turning up. But yep. honestly, I really actually hope OMG come out strong in this game, not just because obviously I'd love to have a three game series, but also cream on your so is something I am so down for. That's true because we talked about him. He's a Kali's great, his champion pool is wide. The Yasuo as well. We know that there's a big difference between a, a good Yasuo and a great Yasuo. Uh, to be fair, there's also a big difference between a good Yasuo and a Yasuo. So we're going to find out which one he is. But in this lane as well, we're already seeing him push out, taking the Conqueror into Shanks 2, who's got the same. But Cream zoning him away. He's hit too. And abusing the Q early and the damage it provides. Yeah, and I mean, a big fact, if you're able to find this mid-priority, you're not as threatened by a Xin Zhao. Obviously, we did see that early gank coming out from Beishang that took Cream's flash in that game one. You won't be able to do that as easily on uh, the Viego. And I believe you can actually block the stun. Uh, it is a small projectile, so the wind wall can work against that one. The so Cream yep. should be pretty comfortable just to apply pressure in this matchup and kind of give Shanks a little bit of trouble uh, in the mid lane matchup. And I'd like to see more of that in the bot. In, in game one, it was just the bottom lane that had the agency. Everything else was falling apart as you got ganked early. But another thing is, you, you already talked about Beishang having a slower early game because he's on this Viego. But even more importantly, like, it should be a lot more stable for the set up in this top lane. Depending on the, how, how those trades go, it should be that slower early game that gives OMG a chance to actually get the items before everything spiraled out of control. Now, I've said that already. Wind Wall is available. It blocks Beishang. Nice interaction there as Cream just walks away. Yeah, and I mean, the thing is, if that was his in Zhao... Could have been a lot more uh, dicey in that situation, but Cream able to mitigate that and then should just be able to pick up this wave and go back to pressuring Shanks. So 
We're seeing already the difference between having this lower pressure jungler, Beishong, these plays that might have worked with this Jin Zhao not necessarily going to here. And that means Aki, more comfortable. Aki might be able to look for something in the mid lane here as well. Although Cream just took a really bad trade at the back end of that. Yeah, Shanks also has enough matter to abscond of Duck, get a Kingslayer in there as well. So as the wave builds up, Cream, not in threat of a dive, but still. Good threat here means that bot is a little bit safe, means that uh, Aki can't do anything either. But onto Breathe at the top lane, that's a different story. You setting up for the face breaker. He's taken a lot of damage as he hits first, but flashes into the Haymaker shield, and you flashes out for first blood. Beautiful play there. And I mean, this is what we expect from Aki, putting a lot of tension towards the top lane. Obviously, we didn't get to see so much with the Gwen, but. One of the things with Gwen is that she's really good at pushing early. Mundo, not so much. So New was able to set up that wave in a good position for the dive. And it's so easy to dive with the set with that massive shield with the stun as well. So banning that early advantage and putting Breathe behind. And let's remember if Mundo falls behind as well, like sure, he, he'll still scale once he gets a couple of items. But Mundo behind, so much easier for this comp to shred through. People like Abel, people like Cream, even Aki as well. So I like this. I like that OMG are sticking true to what they've played over many different games. Aki always hits that top side. Orcs, you even said it yourself in game number one as, as some ambitious trading at the bottom lane. But all summoners down for breathe. It is repeatable. And as Aki gets towards level six and has a full jungle to clear back up towards that top side, I'm ready to watch OMG double down. Yeah, and if they go for that gank again, continue to put him behind. As you said, you can really hit the Mundo because he's kind of like a stat check champion. If your team can burst him down before he starts healing, then he just loses so much value. But we've yep. all seen those scenarios where the Mundo is almost unkillable. You drop his health, but he keeps healing up and your DPS can't match him. He's very much a DPS check, ultimately. And if he's too tanky, he will win that out over the side of OMG. So putting him more and more behind, definitely beneficial now. I'm going to TP in here in the mid lane. You can see Beishong once again waiting around and potentially threatened, but it's really hard for him to find an angle on this Yasuo. Yeah, it is. I mean, Cream playing through with the Sweeping Blade. Look at this. Still Tempest through as well. And Windwall just in case the, the Viego oh, was the sticking well. around. Yeah, so very cheeky from Cream. Means he'll have a nice little freeze there as well as the next wave crashes in. And Breathe just pushing up at the top lane for the meanwhile. While Aki clearing away some wards. He was spotted out on a ward towards blue buff. So WE have full tracking here. As another TP is going to be committed bid. Yeah, I like the decision. Uh, not the decision, sorry. The, the ward setup coming out from Beishong to, to yep. put the control ward down. Add some coverage for the team. Uh, and essentially stop uh, Aki from just moving straight up towards top lane. to plenty dive, Breathe. There's actually also a nice roam timing from missing there. This is something that I've seen him do in a fair few games where he finds these windows to move quite a distance. And that one really just helping to secure that top side scuttle. So, you know, WE doing pretty solidly in this early game, uh, but not nearly as explosive as we saw in that game one. Which is kind of nice as a tempo change. I think when we're going to expect maybe more intense 5v5s, more exciting 5v5s. Uh, something that we didn't really talk about as well is the difference coming through with what we're seeing in the comp, right? There's a lot of all-in, but after the all-in, there's a bit more consistent damage this time. Yasuo can position through these fights and can actually put out good DPS as comparison. Orcs, I'm completely blanking. What was the mid lane pick for game number one from OMG? What was uh, the Viego. The Viego, right? So there is a bit more consistent damage. A Conqueror coming through as well is going to help with that. But more consistently, you're looking at a melee 80 carry in the Yasuo. So it's exciting for me watching OMG make, if only the smallest adaptation, but an adaptation nonetheless as they start the dragon after getting some more priority. I think the difference as well is, is with the set is you can have two sort of sets that come in your game. There's the set who's behind. It was like the old set when we used to see tank set, basically a CC bot. But when set is ahead, his damage is pretty insane, actually. Yeah. And like we talked about, you know, if you're snowballing with this composition from OMG, the burst damage available is a lot higher. And then really it's, you know, relying on that DPS from Cream and Abel, which is obviously bolstered from game one. So, so Always far, OMG the console, but an ult. Last breath there. <laughs> has the sweeping blade to gap close onto Shanks. Remember, Shanks has flash though, so. Cream just going to play and try and punish him further. That is an ulti down and Shanks having to heal up. Yeah, but obviously with that uh, Seeker's Arm Guard pick up early, not too much threat of going down just thanks to that extra armor. But still, again, we're seeing Cream. There was that little hiccup earlier where he took a bad trade, but for the most part, he's had priority mid lane. And this has really allowed Aki to have 
quite a bit of freedom. They picked up that dragon together. They're now moving towards the Herald. You do see actually Abel making a very early roam towards this top side to cover the mid wave. So WE look like they want to contest this, but uh, OMG have some good setup for this. They're going to have the mid wave pushed in. So if WE don't answer that one, they're going to miss out some minions. So OMG feel confident to take this. Cold even on the way, but you takes a big chunk of damage. It's actually stolen by Bay Shunk. Over the wall, OMG haven't got the Herald as April flies on in, though. The Moonfall used in great succession, but Breeze healing up. Maximum dosage is already popped. And now they're going to struggle to get through, but Cold re-engages. Able forward once again. Stolen by Shanks, though. Can Elk do any damage to put down? As Missing still following up. Arcane ship forward. Cold is now dead. There's the Glacial Ooh. Fisher down. Maximum knockup onto Arc. He has nowhere to go. And Missing getting the absolute max out of that ulti. And I think this was just a little bit greedy by OMG. They had the setup for this. All they needed to do was drop the Herald, let the aggro reset, and then WE are forced to respond to the waves or sacrifice gold on the map. If they do that play, you already saw Abel move up, push the wave into mid. If WE don't respond to that, they just lose out on a bit of gold. But instead, OMG try and force the issue. They lose the Herald thanks to Beishung. And then on top of that, yep. they end up losing the fight because again, the ults are decent, but they're not amazing in this situation. And the Yasuo are not really offering enough damage at this point. So we got the replay here and you see Beishung find this great opportunity to take it but the ult from Ezreal also <laughs> doing a ton of damage and then we see this initial uh play coming out the combination there but realistically although they managed to take down the Viego the Braum gets so much value in these Titanic skirmishes the Silas the Ezreal are essentially untouched during this fight and then the stolen Magnet Storm also a massive factor yeah Shanks's ulti was beautiful able to pick up the stolen Herald as well so that adds even more value and just look that's the it's max range pretty much but yeah, it was stolen just so Herald, beautiful. Stolen Herald, stolen all. You know, <laughs> WE are just thieves at the moment. Yeah, Beishang, lucky, lucky he didn't steal any possessions coming through in that fight as he died earlier on. Would have just added on top of that anyway. As Jungle is now hovering around, around the mid lane. Remember, it's three to three gold even, but the Herald still sits in the inventory of Shanks, which is going to give him a fast back if he wants to TP in. But more importantly, give him a lane to put this down, whether it's his own or whether they look back up towards that top lane. Because right now, after the play orcs, I see that Okay, Breeze died. I don't really care about that too much. I see that Elk has two kills after the fact. Yep. And that means we're going to have a very early Divine Sunder for the Ezra. And the thing we actually saw from the bot lane is in game one, there was so much fighting. There was so much back and forth between these two. But the Braum has really stagnated that. We didn't yeah. see very much action in the bot lane 2v2. And typically that is where Ezreal's the weakest. And now having navigated the laning phase, having got a big influx of gold, he's going to be close to his Divine Sundra. And that's the point where the Ezreal really starts to come online. So WE going to this mid game should be feeling pretty confident around that. But again, looping back to game one, OMG, this is where they actually started to find some momentum was in these mid game 5v5s where they found the engages, where they punished Beishung. So there is very much still an opportunity for OMG to push the number here. When they had the confidence with a couple of items, or at least the first item to put through. Protobelt there for, uh, for Aki in the jungle. We still don't have a first item for Cream, which is a little bit worrying. But uh, here you can see Harold being put down the bottom lane moments before Dragon spawns. Sharing gold between four members is going to be very likely here, as it doesn't even get the charge. It was just stuck against the wall. I hit two times and... That's pretty unfortunate considering Creep's just getting free tower play. Yeah, absolute disaster. And the thing is, there's a great response from OMG. There was the four-man setup from WE for that play to try and make it work, but just a little bit sloppy. I think what they could have done is moved there, saw that the reaction was there from OMG. They could have backed away, moved back to mid, put, put it down there, but they commit to the play and OMG are ready to punish. And again, yes, we do see Breathe matching in terms of plates in the top lane, but more gold on cream is always going to be more valuable in this one. 100%. And then the dragon on top as well, right? You give the stats and take it away from the Mundo. It's not going to be a mountain soul, but you take away those stats from Bruiser champions on the side of WE. And especially people like the Brom as well as the later the game goes. So OMG, going to be enjoying that one. An ocean soul coming up though, which if we talk about Mundo, definitely cannot be given over to WE, whatever the case. Uh, that'll just be an absolute disaster. So OMG playing the early game quite nice again, moving into this mid game and starting to get closer towards those first items on the core damage deal as you talked about, Ox. Abel is almost there, has gone for the Serrated Dirk for the Q upgrade. Cream with the Zeal. Looks like we will be getting the Zeal item start off. Yeah, so 
Uh, once he does one mount spikes, I feel like OMG will be a bit more comfortable. Uh, willing to look those the windows. As you said, Ocean Drake, you don't want to give that to W. It's actually a shame because OMG would have loved Infernal. But one thing to note uh, is the terrain change, actually. And it really favors OMG because we talked about the vision control from W in game one, how it tried to negate all the flanks coming out. Now that it's the Ocean Soul map, that increased amount of brushes actually makes it much harder to effectively ward and allows opportunities like this in the river. As Missing's gonna walk on in, they know he's there. They watched him. Abel's gonna go in first. Winter's fight to slow him down. Cold and Aki not gonna pull the trigger, but note that Aki hasn't showed himself. It's just the bottom lane contesting. He's gonna be walking back for now. And it means that Beishung has to hover and check so that WE can regain and clear out some of the vision you were talking about with the terrain. As Colt won't be in any trouble here, Abel's still nearby. Yeah, and I like the move from WE, taking it patiently, waiting for the jungler to be there to apply that pressure. But again, it is just so much more dangerous when you have these extra brushes, when you have to ward them, when you have to clear more areas for the setup. But uh, Green should just be able to navigate this one. Uh, Wind wall really effective against the Braum as well, just being able yep. to block so much with the ultimate and the Q. But I like these moves coming out from Missing and Beishang. I like the fact that they're pairing up together. We saw it a little bit in game one, where they just move on the map as a duo. And I think it's really something that I kind of feel elevates a team uh, above, you know, some of their competition is when there's a good jungle support synergy. They move together to find skirmishes, to find vision control, and for those setups. And we see actually the pairing coming through from OMG as well. And they are looking to contest this Herald on this one. Both AD carries nowhere near, but both teams still ready to take this. I just love this from OMG. They've done this both games. Now, Cold has always been one of the first up for the Herald spawning. Whether it's the first or whether it's the second, while well, Breathe is just proxy waving up at the top side, oh, by the Lord. way. And WE sitting alongside them. Herald has been disengaged for now. And Beishunk just going to hop on over the ward. Seems like he's going for Scuttle instead. So everyone backs away, although support's still up there. It seems like Cold will go back to the bottom lane while Elkin missing, or Elkin able, excuse me, will just be farming the wave for now. 15 minutes in, only six kills. You're right, Orcs, a, a much slower game. And I feel like that is rightly in part to the Brom, to the Disengage, and to both teams looking to take it a little bit more easy as Herald will go down to WE in the end. But uh, we'll have to see where this gets put down because Alders are still up uh, uh, across the map. Yeah, and I mean... As long as the Herald hits something, it's going to be better than the first Herald from WE. Very it's not a very high bar to set, but uh, I think, honestly, though, they don't really seem to be needing it. Breathe, really excelling in this matchup. Obviously, early laning phase, a little bit uh, dicey for a moment there, especially with the gank from Aki. But now, it feels like New can't really match up into him. Just the briefcase is being thrown into his face, doing a bit too much damage and keeping him at bay. So, does just take that first tower by himself, kind of organically. Yeah. And even now the setup for mid with the Herald, it's going to be another turret for WE. So gold's going to be about a 1500 in the lead for this team. OMG won't be able to defend this. Enough damage has already been done. Shanks is here as well. Elk just needs to move away from the turret. Has a couple more autos to cure. But Missing's going deep onto Arky. Moonfall into the back line as well. Cold sets up for the engage. He tracked to repel the follow-up Moonfall though onto WE. Was beautiful from Arky, but the damage still not there. Cream's running for his life, getting himself sweeping blades. New as well, relying on Abel. You want yourself Cream in the fight, but he's hitting the minion wave. He doesn't know where to go. Not confident, no problem. WE will snag it from under your back. And they get a second charge as well on top of that. Beautiful for WE. And I love the decision to take this fight. So confident for missing. We don't typically look as Bra at Braum as an engaged champion. It's very much know. seen as a peeling one. It's very hard to hit that max range ultimate. But missing able to find it there to start off the fight. And the reason it works so well is because it wasn't a 5v5. It opened as a 5v3. And again, we talked about how OMG need that instant impact. Because WE were the ones starting the fight with a numbers advantage, by the time Abel joined the fight on the back end, it was already a little bit too late. So you see the engage come out here onto Aki there. They start the fight off. And again, you can see that team fight potential, the Yasuo combo coming out from OMG, but they're just lacking a little bit of damage there. And then once New and Abel come into the fight, they've already lost a little bit too much ground with Aki down, with uh, Cold down. And so as a result, they aren't able to follow through and finish this out. 
Nabel comes in a little bit late. We're going to try again, though. OMG, it's Showstopper for Showstopper. Shanks has stolen one so much better as Cold gets a Magnet Storm. Sets up for Cream's ulti. This time they have the damage as Abel's hitting onto the back line. OMG, need to clean this one up, and I think they've done it. A couple down, thanks to Elk as he's trying to kite his way back. But Abel takes him down. And WE this time, running into the forefront when OMG have numbers. Ooh. OMG managed to find the full 5v5. They get the combo up and you can see the damage potential. Once the momentum is there, they're able to clean up. They're able to secure the third dragon off the game as well and get that mid tower. So bouncing back almost instantly from that team fight loss in the mid lane. It feels like last fight, you know, it was a bit hard on Cream, but maybe the fight wasn't winnable. OMG knew that, he knew that, but this time around, there was no hesitation on pulling the trigger and committing to that full five on five. Another replay, Orcs. Welcome to the LPL, by the way. Yeah, I mean, I'm enjoying it. I'm loving it, especially in this meta. We do see maybe a little bit of an early engage coming out from New. He does end up going down, but then this massive Moonfall Hasaki combo coming in and able to hear free hitting on the sideline able to get so much damage off and often when a team fight goes in favor of omg across the series we've seen so far in the summer split it's when able is there to clean up and he's able to do so in that fight and now gold slightly in favor for omg but they have those three dragons in pocket they do and that's going to be absolutely massive for omg because you look at how this next fight's going to go omg not only with the gold lead but items through the mid lane items Soon through the bottom lane, I'm sure. There's going to be a lot more damage available that OMG are going to be even more confident about. And Cream, with the Mortal Reminder, he's also got himself the Immortal Shield Bow. It's a two-item Gasuo that was back and forth in the start, or let's just say quite stagnant. But he's played it to this point where now he is going to be an absolute monster. And Cream, with all the setup on this team, you know, once again showcasing a, a pretty good side to him alongside people like Aki. I think Aki's been someone we talked about and he's got two items as well. Sonji's Hourglass picked up moments ago. I love the decision from OMG to put Cream up against the Mundo. We saw New struggling pretty heavily in this matchup in the 1v1, but Cream is just uh, really unstoppable now. There's no one on the side of WB can match him. And again, that early mortal reminder itemization obviously had the executioners early, but if the two laners you're going up against are going to be a Silas or a Mundo, it has so much value because with three autos on a target, you get that 60% Grievous Wounds. And when you're against healing yeah. champions, that is such a massive factor. So right now, OMG, yes, we've talked about their massive team fight potential. They don't even necessarily need to rely on that. They now have this side lane threat that can really come through for them. Because right now, Cream, again, just really hard to deal with. And I also want to say that, you know, while you see Yasuo ulti, uh, the Mortal Reminder is going to have so much value. You know, hitting multiple targets, we get that Grievous Wounds off. So uh, if Breathe is caught up, Shank's caught up, Face Shank, I mean, everyone on this team will have healing. Elk's there and missing, probably the only one missing out. Uh, it feels like that item going to have such great capacity in this game number two. Also like to see it on someone like Abel as well, as he's just picked up the Collector. I also want to point out that on the other side of WE, they are getting their second items as well. So it's not as cut and dry. It's not like OMG have this game firmly in their grip because now it's a fully stacked Mana Mune. It is a Zonya's Hourglass. We've got a random zone for Breathe as well. Not a Warmog second with the Grievous Wounds picked up thanks to the Bramble Vest as well. So WE are hitting their stride close to this Dragon as well. Yeah, and the random is so much value when there's Yasuo and uh, uh, Kaisa both doing a fair amount of crit damage, yep. able to shut that down. And I think the thing is, what, what makes this game so interesting in game one as well, is the gold leads relatively even, and the comps do such very different things. There's just different win cons when it comes to that team fight. We have the fast-paced impact of OMG with those big ultimates. We have the good sustained value from WE. So as a result, you see this dynamic where it really feels like either team can take the fight. It's just dependent on the setup and the execution. And so, you know, despite the fact OMG have found the edge now, they are up in gold by a little bit. They have those two dragons. I still feel like WE could take a fight if they can set things up correctly. And that's why I want to talk about vision control as OMG move up towards the Baron. Something that I know you'd be really interested in in this series holistically, where we do have really good defensive line here from WE, but OMG starting to get deep on both sides of the map towards the Dragon, towards Baron, tracking out the potential angles that people like Shanks can play through, where Breathe comes from as well. Uh, OMG also controlling those angles, Orcs. Important when we talked about playing through the map state, the terrain change thanks to the Ocean Soul. 
and more about where people like Aki, New can even come from, or even Cold on the rep. And that's what makes it so difficult. If you're trying to push into an area you don't control and you're rushing it, you're not going to be able to check every single brush. There'll be wards you don't necessarily sweep and that allows flanks to come in from the enemy team. And potentially that can be so devastating for the side of WE, especially if L gets caught by the showstopper by set, the fight just might well be over. That's right. Catch him between. He's already pushed out the bottom wave quite deep. He can play through the tri brush for now. The breathe has to go back and respond to the wave. So there is pressure on the inner turret, and it's you walking up through the river. WE staying grouped as a five-man unit as the Ocean Dragon that will be an Ocean Soul if OMG can pick it up. There's the set, potentially looking for a flank here. Right he grabs the Mundo. The back line. Here we go for the base breaker. Into it as well. Cold jumps on in. The Winter's Bite, the setup concussive blows. Doesn't matter anymore because OMG have burst them down as Aki goes golden. Now on top of Shanks. Cream hitting away. The Yasuo gets yet another knockup onto Breathe. Five versus two. They do it again. They find that impact, the AoE mess coming out, the Hazaki fall is just so good for OMG. And as much as Elk is able to get out and maintain his safety, he's not able to assist his team. They get absolutely decimated and Cream potentially not oh, for more. Trouble. Elk's in so much trouble, he has to flash away. Cream is a menace on this Yasuo now as Ocean Soul goes over. Denied from the Mundo, given over to a set, a Yasuo, a, a Kaiser as well. Things looking real good for OMG in game two. Absolutely, and that gold lead now being pushed pretty substantially, and the scaling really is there with the Yasuo on the team, with the Kais as well. These two are gonna be doing a ton of damage now. Cream opting for the GA in this situation for more longevity, but yeah, we can see this replay. So although they don't manage to catch Elk here, New slams Beishong into the fight, opts for the Viego in this situation, and this AoE combo just absolutely decimates the front line of WE. And yes, we do see Elk able to survive on the back line, but he's not able to really contribute thanks to the wind wall. And as a result, OMG, they have the numbers advantage. They still have the sustained damage to carry through and WE are on full retreat. Cause Shank's got a five man moonfall there as well, but you're right, the Elk damage mitigated thanks to the wind wall. Uh, another tool that's been utilized so well here in this game is the GA on Yasuo now exists, folks. Keep that in the back of your mind as Baron is the next call. WE down 3,000 gold and struggling to get towards the river. As OMG, you look at the side waves right now. Top's pushing in. Bot as well as building up. Mid is under control. And OMG have everything in their basket right now to set WE back. You can see... Oh, missing. I think he should be okay yeah, here. But now. WE struggling to try and contest this one. They want to push through and uh, force the number, but it's so dangerous in this choke point in particular. So they have to be really cautious on this one. OMG are going to pay some respect, back away a little bit and look to contest the mid wave. Critical thing to look out for is always Aki in these team fights. Those Moonfalls have been absolutely massive so far. Cream going forward, not going to see anything of the likes of those ultis. Aki just backs away and OMG do the same. Remember Ocean Soul here, so you're just going to heal up with every little piece of combat. Which gives you a little bit more time to deal with it if you're someone like Cream. Into the river, WE will now move themselves, but New is right in front of them. WE are split apart, missing set down, but over the wall, stand behind me, used well. Beishung as well, disengaging. OMG getting hit, the moonfall there. It's only a two man ulti though. WE trying to buy time, but Cream has already found missing and into the back. Shanks doesn't get any value this time, but Elk is able to hit through. Golden is cold and WE still have four, but they're pushing forward. OMG need to get the hell out of there. It's a Yasuo that needs to make sure he doesn't get caught out. And Breed is the one frontlining. WE still lose missing. It's still a win for OMG as they disengage and rely on the Ocean Soul. You see, though, without those ults, they don't feel nearly as confident. Only get nope. the support in that situation. Cream, though, he's looking for more, but takes a lot of damage on the back end for it. They have to be careful in these situations. But the cooldowns are ticking away. Yasuo nearly got his ultimate again. Aki and New won't be too much longer. Once again, they set up the vision trap. Walking into the choke as TP comes through. That's from WE. And as Shanks joins the rift once more, he has hijack again, too. Flash almost up for the Silas as well. Uh, look at the summoner choices here. Aki doesn't have his. New doesn't have his. His ultimate almost off the cooldown, though, which is going to be good. And WE use this time to get vision into the Baron area. Elk and Shank's going to receive the wave. And bottom wave and top wave are just building up for OMG. So happy to keep playing for time. 
Yeah, I mean, it's favoring them in the long run in this situation. Oh, Pei Shung. Having trouble getting solid out by Yu. He has to flash away. Use the Heartbreaker instead. Yu actually targeted, though. Is there we go again. Into a choke. OMG say thank you very much. Cream running forward, but Elk is not really a threat to fought four people. Still, the poke is measurable as Elk wants to chase this down with missing. But OMG, welcome to their lair. And the thing is, with an Ocean Soul, they're just going to sustain up. You can see once more the huge value from the Wind Wall just Look blocking it. Elk from really having to say in any of these fights. Now, they have to be so careful here to get engaged on. Elk certainly would go okay. down, but the Wind Wall once more going to block them off. They it should just there. take Baron. The Baron does go down. Elk can't do anything about it. The Wind Wall again showcases. And OMG, looking like they could take us to this game three, but things have been so not sketchy. I'm going to say Ted's Orcs. It's been a Ted's game, but OMG hold control. Absolutely. And, you know, you just see in this scenario, Beishong overstepping on low HP. And this time things are more synergized because Beishong ults a target. Everyone gets amassed together. And that's essentially the bait for Aki to come in. The Magnet Storm, Hezaki fall combo. Just absolutely monstrous. And again, that wind wall thrown down. And if OMG continue to play around these windows, where they have the wind wall, where they have those engage combos, Elk just isn't able to really do anything. He is so strong on the Ezreal right now. And yeah. it just doesn't matter. He would love to be able to participate in these team fights, But he's really just, you know, firing some poke off after the fight. So threatened away. Has to pull back. Missing and him have had a pretty good game so far. But... Uh, breathe here on this Mundo hasn't been able to survive much longer than he than, than we wanted to. Uh, I, I think the biggest thing is we talked about this where the Mundo, if he falls behind, if he falls behind an item, it can be dealt with. It's huge as able walking forward himself. Who needs it all in engage when the 80 carry and three and a half items is just so far ahead? Baechun going in, but under turret, Omji don't care. The turret's gone. Missing as well, drops to the dirt as Cream jumps on in. Everyone piles on! The dog pile exists in this game number two as OMG are putting the finishing touches. Flash away from Abel. He survives. He takes the jungler. And oh my god, may have just done it. Love the confidence coming out. They just go forwards, forwards, forwards. They don't give a single opportunity for WAE to breathe. And he's the only member left alive trying to do his best, but the Shasto just doing way too much damage. Look at the ocean soul. Now, Mundo will survive for a little bit longer, but the Nexus will not. Game three on the horizon after OMG showcased the comp. This time, so much better. And, you know, I was hoping for the game three. We got to see the cream yesterday and it was delivering. But the combo, the coordination, this wasn't a one-man carry from this team. This was five members who knew exactly what the wing con was, exactly how things needed to go. And the execution was there. We saw a little sprinkle of this in game one in the mid game. But this felt a consistent thing throughout. Some great adaptations in draft as well to set up for this. It really was. I, I think I love that OMG ran it back, but changed small elements. You talk about those adaptations, seeing the Yasuo in more upfront damage, but also more DPS added to the composition. The biggest thing as well is that they got the Rel this time and Cold on Rel was just magnificent. I mean, Cold has had really standout games so far, but the Rel was like the, the finishing touch that the Leona wouldn't give over to them. I think that's the, the, the crazy thing is that Rel, since we saw those big nerfs for her, she's kind of fallen a fair bit out of the meta. But in the LPL, there are some supports who just are so good on the champion. They make it meta. They make it so powerful. And as a result, you have to keep it out the hands. And we saw that in game one, they banned it away. And in this situation, it didn't have the greatest laning phase because they weren't able to do as much to the Braum. But then in the team fights, it just had such a massive impact. The fact it pulls everyone in and guarantees that they're staying in place for the, uh, the Moonfall for the Diana, just really excellent. And I love the layering of those ultimates. It was clean. I think this is why OMG is so exciting this split because a roster that doesn't have as big a names as some others in the LPL. We talk about New, Aki, Cream with his debut split here in the LPL. Uh, Abel and Cold are the biggest names on this roster, but the other members are showing up as well. And that's what I love, the development yeah. in the league, the development in the team. OMG are a team that I thought in 2020 spring or summer, I can't remember which one, were like, oh, they're so close. They've got SMLZ back again. They can do it. Uh, but this split is a whole new new oyster. And taking WE to a game three, no matter the result, you have to look at this team as, as a playoff contender, absolutely, with the way they're playing their League of Legends. 
Yeah, and again, we've seen this team step up to their competition. And I feel like that really favors the team that goes into playoffs. Great adaptations in the series, yeah. playing up to their opposition. I feel like if they get to playoffs, which in the current position they should be able to, they can make a good run. They really can. Look at the damage. I mean, Cream did quite a lot here. Uh, Abel the same. And you and I did talk a little bit about Elk and the fact that in these fights, it was all done and dusted. Breathe, Beishung were dead. You know, Shanks follows suit. And then Elk trying to put out DPS, but it's him versus the world or it's him and missing versus the rest of OMG. So a really hard game for the Ezreal here and a, a game that, you know, didn't get to be these elongated fights, fights that WE wanted, especially when the Ocean Soul was picked up. It just made it near impossible for the Ezreal to have damage that could kill. Yeah, it just made the damage he was putting down a lot less meaningful because, you know, sure, he did a lot of damage over the course of the game, high DPS, it's expected of an Ezreal, but if the enemy team's just healing that damage up and no one's dying, you're not getting that value, you're not going to win out in the fight, and True. the side of OMG, particularly in the later fights when they had that gold lead, it was like they engage and people just drop like flies. And I'll be curious if they try and run it back for game number three, right? The composition was so much fun to watch in both of these games. Success in game number two. W might have to go back to the drawing board as well. Orcs, we're going to go to yet another break. But after this, game three to find out who wins between OMG and WE. Why would you go anywhere?